I always say yes when I have a big challenge. So I said yes, didn't know how I was going to do it. But we figured it out uh, then. The jacket was gorgeous, modelled on gorgeous Pippa. The photographs went up on Facebook and I received a brilliant response and we said, right, this is it, let's go. Hello, I'm Kim Kelly and I'm here with designer Neve McCarthy. This is the Driven Podcast by It's For Women. Neve, it is so lovely to have you here with us today and I see you're sporting one of your very own jackets. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much, Kim. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. This is the first podcast I've ever done, so delighted to be here in Nuri today. Wonderful. So, Neve, let's start with your exciting story. At 24, she decided she wanted to be her own boss, and so she set up in her parents' garage. Using her incredible skills in embroidery, Neve Designs took off, first doing designs for family trees, then moving into fashion, specifically leather jackets, and bringing the ancient and somewhat lost art of intricate Irish embroidery to a whole new audience. But then, something very special happened. An email from the US catapulted you into the spotlight. How did your connection with what must be the world's most famous family come about? Yes, that's right, Kim. So back in September last year, I woke up on a Monday morning to an email that said, Hello, Neve. Before I get into any detail, can you deliver a jacket to Kourtney Kardashian this Friday in LA? Goodness. I received the email, I I thought it was fake, first of all, and immediately jumped up and down, ran around the house and replied, yes, absolutely, we can do this. And that was on the Monday morning. She, the customer then replied on the Monday at 6 p.m. and placed the order at 7 p.m. So we had less than four days for it to get to LA, to make it, design it, um, and get it shipped to LA. So it left. Uh, our studio in Lurgan on the Wednesday afternoon and it was delivered in LA at 11am on the Friday. So it was a really, really tight, stressful deadline, but we got brilliant feedback and we were just absolutely delighted. Fantastic. And what does this jacket look like? So this jacket, it is aged 18 to 24 months. It is black faux leather. It has um, the baby's surname on the back of it. The baby's surname is Barker. It's Travis Barker's son. And it has a skull and crossbones uh, with red roses. We went for quite a gothic rock and roll design to suit the couple because... Uh, they themselves wore leather jackets on their wedding and they do love a bit of a gothic theme. They do, and Travis is a bit of a rocker. He's the front man, or the drummer actually, on Blink 118. 182, yes, I, that's right. One, that's I thought right. you got that wrong, 182, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so they're into the rock music and yeah. hopefully one day we're going to see this little baby wearing this jacket. We can't wait to see it. How very exciting. Yes, I have lots of people span Keep It Up With The Kardashians, so I'm very, very excited. The Baby Barker will fit in the jack into the jacket until November 2025. So very so that's quite a long time scale. Yes. <laughs> so let's go back in time and please excuse my pun, but I cannot resist. Your career really went from rags to riches. Your career in fashion started with you selling clothing on platforms like Vinted. Yes, that's so correct, Kim. I started selling on Vinted when I was in university. I was really, really busy doing my final year and just didn't have time for a part-time job. And I remember the day I just said, right, Googled how to make money online (laughs) at home. Obviously, some dodgy things came up, but we kept... Indeed. um, Vinted came up and no one had really heard about Vinted. Now, this was back in 2017. And I said, right, we'll give this a go. Um, And it was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I sold basically all my clothes and um, then started selling my mum's clothes, my sister's clothes. Then my aunties were coming round. Then I actually started selling other people's clothes in Lurgan. And I always say Vinted is such an easy and achievable way to start any fashion business. Yes. Because when you're selling on Vinted, you're learning so much. You're learning how to take pictures, customer service how uh, to package and post and there really is so many skills to be learnt by something as simple as Vinted and obviously Vinted is a lot more popular now and um, so I would always encourage anyone to start start on Vinted. <laughs> and then after that you were really hooked on fashion so you went to university to study textiles and 
was was it there that you learned your embroidery skills or is this something that is self-taught? Yes, that's correct, Kim. So went to Ulster University and I studied fashion and textile design and uh, it was a fantastic course. I specialised in embroidery um, in my last two years and uh, since doing the degree, I have met other students in England who had studied the same degree, but the resources we had in Ulster University really were absolutely extraordinary. Um, I was uh, I learned how to use the multi needle embroidery machine. This is a really really expensive machine, and University of Ulster had four of those machines when I was there, and I am very very grateful to have learned those skills at University of Ulster. And what specifically attracted you to the embroidery? Well, I would say. Um, I I actually went to Our Ladies in Newry and I had a fantastic art teacher there and I actually have been obsessed with embroidery since I was about 15. Um, I love embellishment, I love details and um, just uh, how textiles can be transformed. Um, just, just have always had a real love for the detail of it. Yes, yes. So you started then making family trees and that's obviously like leather and cloth and you would embroider on that, maybe like crests and things like that. Yes, that's correct. So after I left university, I had, I actually sold my final piece at my uh, final year show and I was invited to exhibit my final piece in Dublin but in the meantime I had sold this so I had two weeks to come up with something so I actually I come from a really big family in Lurgan and I am obsessed with family history and after I graduated I had two weeks to come up with a piece so I said I'm going to do my family tree all the way back as far as I can so I actually got back to my 16 great great grandparents so that is back to 1860. Fantastic. And uh, so I know where all my family was during the famine and I am really, really proud of that. So, yes, that's how I started out. Did family trees, still do family trees. Really, really gorgeous, gorgeous gift to give anyone for an 80th or 90th birthday. Um, But they are very, very gorgeous. difficult to do especially in Ireland because there's so many people. Sure yes <laughs> yes so then from that how did the move into fashion come about? Yes so I received an order from a lady locally she is so trendy and she had asked me could I do a jacket for her little girl Pippa and I always say yes when I have a big challenge so I said yes didn't know how I was going to do it um, but we figured it out uh, then the jacket was gorgeous modelled on gorgeous Pippa the photographs went up on Facebook and I received a brilliant response and we said right this is it let's go um, so from that then someone locally had asked me to do a leather jacket for her wedding day and I was I was wondering I said when are you going to wear this and she says I'm going to wear it uh, on my wedding day and I said over your dress and she said yes and I was like wow okay and then she sent me the picture she got married in Darver Castle and the she was absolutely gorgeous I couldn't get over it still remember the pictures it was October it was cold and the just absolutely amazing and I said right this this is it we are doing leather jackets for kids and, and for, uh, brides. for brides and yes. of course she was toasty warm too isn't it yes. lovely because it is very cold in those wedding dresses you know mm-hmm. they're all very bare mm-hmm. and also it's something that she can wear again after the wedding because of course you can't wear your wedding dress mm-hmm. so it's nice that she can wear the jacket and I've seen some of them are like embroidered with little expressions and phrases and yes. even the one you have there what does it say on the back? So my one says you you set my world on fire <laughs> it's the Nate Smith song so cute <laughs> uh, so yeah lots of people would get their first dance embroidered on the jacket or even like a nice saying um, or some people don't want any words and they just want their floral colour scheme on it um, and their wedding date under the collar so we really if you don't have a clue what type of jacket you want we can sort you out but equally if you want something really really bespoke we can sort you out too. I just love that it's gorgeous now you have lots of clients here but also most of your clients aren't from Ireland where do you ship to mainly? Yes that's correct 
So most of our work is shipped to America and I am so, so proud of this. 90% in fact go to America. We ship to America every single day. In 2022 and 2023, we posted to every single state in America and that includes Alaska, um, New Mexico, Boston, the whole jing bang. Um, our most popular states would be California, New York, Tennessee and Texas. And But we also ship worldwide. We ship a lot to uh, Germany, actually, and Australia. We recently had an order from Hong Kong. So we have really posted everywhere, but the majority continues to go to America. But we still do have a lot of Irish and UK customers. That's just wonderful, isn't it? I'm fascinated by the fact that you are, in your own way, reviving the textile industry, which of course has such a rich tradition across Ireland. I actually found out that at one time over 40% of Northern Ireland's population was employed in the textile in industry. And then I looked a bit deeper and I discovered that women have been employed as embroiderers since pre-Christian times. In fact, since Patrick had three constantly at work. How important is it that you work on this heritage? So, so important. And I am growing the business at the minute. And there's all, there'll always be discussions about where it should go, but I will always keep it in Northern Ireland. And I would like to think I'll keep it in Lurgan forever too. I have employed two fantastic girls full time. And when I started the business, it wasn't really something I had thought about I would ever get to the stage of employing uh, other people, but it fills me with so much pride um, to watch both of them flourish and to give people the opportunity to have jobs and uh, creative jobs. It was something that I really struggled. I couldn't find a creative job in Northern Ireland when I graduated, but now I am giving the opportunity to other people. I think it's wonderful that you're training a new generation of women in these long lost skills that of course something that what we were so good at back in the day. How hard is it to find people with the right skills to work for you? It is it is hard because we are so it's such a specialized thing that we do. Um the two girls that I am so proud of, uh, I have trained them up and they are fantastic. Um the skills are hard to find. But it's something that I can always train someone in-house to do. Yes, it would be nice, though, if there was that sort of skill set there that obviously 100 years ago there were people who could do these things. And it is very much like a lost skill, so it's lovely that you're bringing that back. Um, what other business struggles have you faced? I mean, did you get any funding, for instance, to set up your small business? No, I have received absolutely no funding. <laughs> I've been going for five years now. Um, and it is really hard, you know, like we are in a tough time right now yes. financially. I started the business in 2019 and then we had COVID in 2020. I thought it was actually over in 2020 yes. and I pivoted. We got through COVID Um, we did really good in 2021 and 2022. And now we are in economic recession, obviously. So it is really tough. And I would say that there needs to be more financial support in Northern Ireland. I am a member of Women in Business and there is fantastic networking uh, opportunities in Northern Ireland um, to grow your business, but there needs to be financial support. Um, there needs to be more help for small businesses because they are the backbone of the economy. Well, they are, yes. And I mean, very often you must have felt a little bit lonely because you're very young to run your own business. Yes, um, it can be absolutely uh, very, it can be very lonely. Uh, before I had employed Megan, we, it, it was, it was quite lonely for myself. Um, but that was when women in business was so important to me. I always tried to go to one networking event a week. And when you walk in there and you meet another entrepreneur, you just, it's just like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. You just connect with them automatically and they just know the struggles and the stress and everything that you're going through. And it really is just like speaking to a sister. <laughs> of course. And you mentioned Women in Business and uh, I understand that you won a very special award from them recently. Yes, that's correct. So in March 2023, I won Young Businesswoman of the Year for Northern Ireland and I was absolutely delighted. I went to the Women in Business Awards in 2019, just before 
it was actually the night before I went self-employed. I went on the Thursday night and I remember seeing the girl who won Young Businesswoman of the Year. And I just thought that is absolutely amazing to have your own business and be working for yourself and to have the recognition from the whole of Northern Ireland. And I suppose I always thought um, I would love to win it. Really never thought of it. But um, I said, I'll apply before I'm 30 because you have to apply for young businesswoman before you're 30. So it was 28 at the time. We actually had 2022. We had a great year. We had loads of sales, but we had a really, really tough December. I had a lot of supply chain issues, which I have since sorted. We had loads of people coming to us saying, I want this jacket and we couldn't get them manufactured. We couldn't get them sourced. And I, I was I was worrying about the business and I said, if I get through December, I'm going to apply for Young Businesswoman because uh, I'll be really proud if we just survive December. Yes. So I got through, applied, and when they called out my name in March 2023, I was very, very emotional. And, mm-hmm. you know, the it was the first real bit of recognition that I ever received. And I will be forever grateful for that because... Um, the first is always the most special. It is, isn't it? And what did your mum and dad think of it? Do you come from a fashion background? Uh, no, but well, my my mum and my granny are very, very fashionable. Right. It love a uh, colour and I suppose crazy clothes. Um, th- there's no such thing as beige in their wardrobes. Um, <laughs> but uh, my dad has his own uh, bespoke furniture business, so they right. were they were they were absolutely delighted, and it was. Uh, so happy that they were there on the night and yeah we had a brilliant time and uh, the Women in Business Awards are actually coming up in a few weeks now for 2024 so um, uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting the winner this year. For sure and what are your plans for the future? Where do you see Neve Designs going? Yes so this so my plan is keep growing but most importantly we are going to grow the kids side um, the kids jackets we are have just made a really big investment we are getting um, kids jackets in from 12 to 18 months right up until 8 to 9 and we're going to really grow that side of the business we also were doing lots of of men's jackets at the minute there's actually been so many men coming saying my wife got this jacket can you do me a matching one? Oh, how cute <laughs> yeah i know so uh, we're growing that size side of the business too and we um we're just going to keep going and i would love to think that we will be providing a lot more jobs in lurgan uh, a lot more creative jobs and yeah, really, really proud of how far we've come and we're just going to keep taking it one step at a time, move the whole thing on 1% every day. Fantastic. That's really good news for the economy. Now, on a personal level, you are getting married very soon. So the big question is, are you going to be wearing one of your jackets? And if so, what's it going to look like? <laughs> yes, definitely, Kim. So we have actually, we've just booked our wedding. We're getting married on Friday the 13th, oh. <laughs> 2025. Um uh, everyone looks at me when I say that, but me and Alan met on Friday the 13th. So the saying is unlucky for most, but lucky for some. So I hope it's lucky for us now. Uh, yes, we will both be wearing jackets. Um, the design w- is still to be decided, um, but really, really excited and also really excited to support local uh, wedding businesses as well. Uh, people who I have always looked up to in Northern Ireland. So yeah, exciting times ahead. Yes, that does sound very, very exciting. And um, finally, if I want to order one of your jackets, how do I go about it? Yes, absolutely. You can find us on social media at Neve Designs or uh, go to our website, www.nevedesigns.com. Fantastic, Neve. Thank you so much for coming in today. My pleasure, Kim. And that's it for today. A special thanks to our guest, Neve, for joining us and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have, please leave a review. We read every one and make sure to follow It's For Women on social media. I've been your host, Kim Kelly, and this has been the Driven by It's For Women podcast.